Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got three big stories for you today to kind of round out your day. Maybe a live stream later tonight. We'll see. One of my children's a bit behind on homework, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But before I talk about this news, I've got to remind you, we are giving away a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, or a Nintendo Switch OLED to one lucky winner. That's right, one of you to walk away with a free system this month. All you have to do to enter is head down to the pinned comment or the description. Use that gleam.io link. I wish everybody luck. Also, if this is the first time you've ever seen a Nintendo Prime video, I would appreciate it if you drop a like. Heck, drop a like anyways. Subscribe to the channel and let me know what is your most anticipated Nintendo Switch game this year down in the comments. All right, let's get into our first story and it deals with Pillars of Eternity 2. Dead Fire. So this game was announced for Switch, an Obsidian RPG coming to Switch a year or two ago at this point. And well, they haven't actually like thrown out a tweet about this or anything, but on their official Discord server, they have confirmed that they have canceled the Nintendo Switch version. Here is a direct quote coming from Dave Hilgard, the community lead at Versus Evil. He said, hey there, unfortunately, after much deliberation, we have decided to not move forward with Pillars of Eternity 2, Dead Fire for the Nintendo Switch. Now it's really interesting to see the news delivered in this way because they did this through a Discord server. Man, when did Discord become this you know thing that we're delivering news through? But whatever, news can come from all facets of the internet. And if we can get leaks and stuff on Reddit and 4chan, why not have the actual person who works there say it on their official Discord server? So it's an unfortunate way to find out about a canceled Switch game. We still have other major third-party games to look forward to this year, including Gollum, the Lord of the Rings game. Oh, and don't forget we have Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, not too far away. Actually, a bunch of DLC coming for that game as well. We're not to be talking about it today. Uh, we'll wait till closer to when the game comes out to talk about all the things happening with that game, but I'm really excited for that one as well. So we're not done with third party games on Switch, but yeah, it's just another one bites the dust. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Another one bites the dust. Dun, 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 dun. And another one bites the dust. Uh, Mario Party Superstars potentially got a DLC leak today and it's really weird how this leak happens so we've had official surveys in the past come through and leak different things and this one's weird because there's a survey happening on youtube that essentially asks you hey what sort of games would you are you would you buy dlc for and it lists all the various dlc for games nintendo publishes obviously that already have dlc and the fifth one is Mario Party Superstars, which doesn't actually have any DLC announced, free or otherwise. So this almost pseudo confirms that, yeah, we're going to be getting Mario Party Superstars DLC. I don't think it's really shocking to hear that's going to happen. It looks like it's going to be paid DLC. And usually when you get paid DLC, hello, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and 48 new tracks. It's usually pretty substantial for Nintendo. So I already think that Super Mario, a new Super Mario, Super Mario Party Superstars, whatever, is already one of the best Mario Party games ever released. So heck, let's get some new boards. Let's get some new games. Let's get some new playable characters and some other fun things added to this game. And give me more and more reasons to live stream it on Tuesdays with my audience. I'm really looking ex uh, like excited. I was literally about to say, I'm really looking excited. I'm really excited and looking forward to whenever Nintendo decides to unveil this brand new DLC again. We can call it a rumor for now, but the way this leaked out is, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna call it a leak, but I guess Nintendo hasn't announced it, so it's a rumor. I don't know, take it for what you will. Our last story comes from fellow YouTuber, Bob Wolf. That's right, Wolf Den, I'm looking at you. Hey, come over here. Why won't you come on my podcast, you bastard? I've been inviting you for two straight years. Look at your DMs. So I'm gonna call your mother for this one. Anyways, so look, Bob Wolf has been testing since the launch, actually really before the launch of Switch OLED, to see how long it would take for burn-in to happen. And last we heard from him three months ago was at 1800 straight hours with a static image with some bright spots from Breath of the Wild on screen, and there had been no burn-in. Now, fast forward another three months and 1800 hours, and yes, we have now hit 3,600 hours of this screen running nonstop with the static image on there with some bright spots. And yes, there actually is some burn-in. Now he doesn't consider this burn-in to be something that is actually that noticeable. You sort of have to look for it. You can see it on bright white screens and like other colors like purple and orange. If you use like the colors game and, and do like a whole color for your whole screen, you can see it here and there. 
but it's not that noticeable unless it's pointed out to you. And he says it really would impact gameplay or anyone consider this something that he would RMA with Nintendo to try to get a new screen. He also notes that this is obviously an extreme measure where you're leaving a game on a static image, you know, like you would have like static UI, you know, for 3,600 hours straight without ever turning the system off. He also notes that, you know, you can actually invert the colors and just burn in the entire screen by running it for 3,600 hours on inverted mode with the same image up. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, he doesn't really think this is a problem. He is going to keep the test going until it gets to a point where he would consider the Switch to be unplayable. And that would be where literally the image is just plastered and stuck on screen and getting in the way of playing other games and affecting your ability to play. And that could take another 3,600 hours or 4,000 or more. Who really knows? OLEDs are known for burning in, but or burning out. It kind of depends on, you know, we always call it burn in, but it's actually more like a burning out method when you actually look at why this happens. That being said, yeah, it's not something that I would actually put that much stock into. I wouldn't really worry that much about it. I just know that, hey, you know what, Bob Wolf? You're doing, you know, God's work over here. You know, being the Lord. It's, it's not enough that you already look like Jesus. Now you have to be Jesus and rain down on us the information that nobody else is willing to do because nobody wants to try to ruin a $350 Switch OLED. Except you, and apparently me. Remember when I uh, broke the screen? <laughs> that was a fun one. God, I'm an idiot. All right, folks. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jets from Nintendo Prime. Konnichiwa, and I'll catch you in the next video, I think. Hey, hey, you didn't think I was going anywhere yet, did you? I hope not. Please subscribe to the channel. Drop your little comments down below to let me know your most anticipated Switch game. Enter that giveaway, folks, and uh, let me know how I'm looking today. I think I'm looking kind of fly. Yeah.